Hi, I'm Sarah Jane from Natural Heating and today I'm going to do a video on the Viking Mini 2 which is made by Wa in Denmark. You may wonder why I'm standing out in the road, but we're going to actually look at the one in this house which belongs to my young assistant, Violetta, we just call her Ray, um, and this is her house and her flu system. Um, let me just show you and then we've got a key, we'll go inside and we'll light it and we'll see what she does. So this is V's beautiful little house that I've been lucky enough to come and video today and as you'll see that she has an external turn wheel system. Now external turn wheel systems are notoriously difficult to light when you've got bad weather um, to get a positive draw so it's important that you use the correct techniques to make sure that there's never any issues with cold plugs. Now this, this um, particular flu system is visible from a road as you can see round about and because it's not behind a hedge um, or a fence and because it's onto what's classed as a main highway or a proper drive through road as you can see this required planning permission both because the house build was under five years old and also just because of the flue coming out on the side well so let's go and have a look now it is just a little house and we use them oops, we use the mini four a lot for this kind of reason because we have got a two bed I think semi detached the living room is about 14 foot square so it's small and compact and the really good thing with the mini four is it can go very close to combustible walls so as you can see those back corners can go within 70 millimeters of the walls and she's got wallpaper in here and this stove is now been in her full year she, and bless her heart she's got it all set up and ready for me to do a test video for you today so this stove is really compact it's a three to seven kilowatt um and as i was telling you a minute ago it can go really close to combustibles um, we will look at one not fitted shortly, which I'll put into this video so that you can see how they're put together. This particular one has got a log store door on the front. Typically, the ones that we stock, I prefer them without the door because the log store doesn't go back far enough to actually put logs in with the door on, but it does with the door without because there's a cover plate to hide if you have a rear flow outlet. No, how do I do it? Um, a rear um, direct air? Well, if you were putting direct air through the wall, you can see she's got an air vent behind there because this is a more modern new building needs air. She's not got a direct air hose, which she could do. Um, she's just got an air vent in the wall. Um, it just, it, it makes the log box more usable when you don't have the door on it because you've got extra depth in there. I'll show you in a dry one later. So this little stove is now a full year old, so it's had a full winter's use. Um, and you can see that it's in extremely good condition on the inside. It does have a little grate in the middle centre, but this is a wood burner. That really just means it's got an ash pan on it. So here's your ash pan. I have to say, the Mini 4 ash pan is the best ash pan of any stove I have ever seen. Now you can burn this stove for a whole day and have no more than about half a teacup of ash. It produces so little ash, it's incredible. But this is just such a damn good design. It doesn't spill, you can carry it out outside to get rid of it and tip it out. It's so, I wish all ash pans are like this. This little stove is so incredibly well thought out and just easy to burn. So that covers all of in there. The door handles on whams are beautiful. I mean, the door closures are just stunning and so easy to use. Once you've opened and shut the doors and a wham, the feel is like nothing else. They really are beautiful. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a couple of kiln dry logs in there and we'll build a little fire and get it started. I've taken to using kiln dry birch on my startup videos when I'm doing videos because I'm using the same wood, same source, kiln dry every single time I'm doing. 
So two small logs in the bottom. I do like these smaller, they're fairly big, but I'm not going to chop them down. And a good pile of kindling on top. There we go. And put one fire lighter in there and then continue to build my stack. Now the really, really important thing, I'll put the big pile on top. The really, really important thing with an external flue system is that we get enough pressure We've got to heat that whole flue up through that wall and all up that outside. So we need to get the heat up that chimney to heat that flue as fast as possible. So you want adequate kindling. Do not skip on kindling, especially with external um, flue systems. And your kindling has to be on a modern stove on the top of the firebox and plenty of it. So one-handed low torch as normal, just because we're videoing and light the fire lighter and away she goes now i'm going to leave this door slightly ajar just until my fire establishes itself okay i'm zoomed out as far as it goes but yeah see how tight that tucks into a corner so it really maximizes the space in a small room now, this hearth is what we call a clipped corner hearth, and it's something that we put a lot of flat-fronted stoves onto where you're going across corners, because I like to see where you've got a flat-fronted stove, you've got a flat-fronted hearth, because it's like framing a picture. It's a matching shape. Um, um, teardrops are beautiful, but I prefer them with round-fronted stoves as opposed to flat-fronted stoves. Now, the good thing about this, this is a 900ml square with the front chopped off. As you will see, that there is plenty adequate hearth on that with the stove at the correct clearances off the wall to give us proper coverage of that carpet. And you will see there are no burns or marks on her carpet. This little house is spotless. Um, it's a beautiful little house and a lovely little stove. And she's a little treasure, I have to say. So anyway, I'm jabbering door slightly open my fire as you'll see is picking away nicely i'm giving it the door is open to give it more updraft more pressure we're trying to push a column of cold so where you've got you. all that cold outside what happens as cold meets hot it makes condensation doesn't it so if you close the door straight away and don't leave the door slightly open then you're more chance of getting smoke deposits initially when on light up stick into the glass. So I always leave the door slightly open to give it more updraft and to dry off any condensation. Then as your fire is getting hotter and faster and we're burning down through the layers of the kindling, we're pushing all that cold air up the chimney. When you put your kindling on the bottom and not the top, what happens is, yes, your logs light faster, but it's more likely to go out. So as your kindling burns down, the logs crash down on top of the kindling and the fire goes out or dies right back. And as it dies right back, you've got a drop in pressure in that chimney. So if you've got cold air up in there and the hot air drops, the cold air comes back down. So it's either going to put your fire out or flood your room full of smoke if it's a really cold, dank day. So what we need to do is make sure we get enough of that hot air up that chimney fast enough to get rid of all the cold. It's kind of like popping a cork out a bottle. And once you pop the cork out the bottle, dead easy. So it's all about pressure and not letting that drop, okay? So as you'll see, my first layer of kindling is quite well burnt. The second layer is going, but the logs in the bottom are already starting to catch. Do you see that? They're catching quite nicely. So what we're gonna do is make a fire sandwich put another small log on top and shut the door so my air vents on the stove are completely open um and that log will catch and that fire will take light and the pressure will not drop and it will get up to temperature beautifully and very very quickly very quickly i can already feel the heat banging out the front of this and it's been about three minutes since i lit it um just the time of this video there's seconds between me stopping the clip and starting it because i'm sitting here with this fire right now 
Um, sometimes I make a bit of a fluff up and it's easier to say I'll start that bit again. But you see, the baffle is already, well, it's hard to say, but the baffle's already starting to change colour as this gets up to temperature. I'm going to let you in on my secret. I tried to do this video yesterday and I messed it up and I had to come back and do it again today. And there's a very good reason for that. It's all down to the air controls. The back to front. Honestly, the back to front. What happens when you turn on a tap? It's lefty loosey, righty tighty, isn't it? So you turn the tap on that way and you turn the tap off that way. Usually, that's how stove controls work. So you always have your primary air on the bottom and your secondary on the top. And if you've got one control, it does both, but they both all go from left to right. Not this one, this one goes right to left. So I couldn't understand yesterday why I couldn't get this stove up to temperature. And it actually took me quite a wee bit of time because it was smoking up in the inside and I was having to open the door and I was like, this doesn't work like that. Why is it not working? It was me, it wasn't the fire. It's just the air controls are back to front. And I can honestly say on any of the stoves I've tested, I don't think I've had that on any of them because they're all the other way round. Let me show you. God, it's getting hot. This is your air control down here. We have one air control that works this fire. Now, when you look at it in that tiny gap, way down there underneath the door, you can see the wider bit is on the left and the narrow bit is on the right. That means the fully open is this way and shut is that way. And normally it's the complete opposite. So it's not been long at all. And this little stove is getting very quickly up to temperature. You can hear the metal expanding and con contracting as it clicks a little bit, it's a convection unit. I'm just priming the door so that I can open it to show you it doesn't spill and that the baffle is clear in the top. It's just fierce at the minute. It's burning really hot. So I'm going to turn her down. Yesterday, I was trying to turn it. Well, I started with it the wrong way so it just wouldn't get hot. There you go. Now, this isn't up to full temperature yet. You can see the black at the top of the baffle. That's not on the glass. The glass is spotlessly clean. It's just the stove isn't filling at temperature and I've just turned it down. But there's really, really good air control on this. And actually, in the past five or ten seconds when I've been speaking to you, that baffle at the top is almost completely cleared already. Her poor little house is going to end up roasting today because it's not cold outside it's about 20 degrees out there now and here's me lighting a fire it's going to be like a furnace when she gets home poor pet that's just the expansion and contraction noises of it heating up it's amplified on video it is nowhere near as loud as it sounds with this stove it's a convection stove and that means yeah i just turned it down it's too hot for me i need to move away that means it's built up on panels. I'll show you on a stove when we get home, uh, when I get back to the unit. Um, these air holes, because it's layered, is pushing lots of heat out of here. It's to help keep the body shell cool air and put heat faster into the room where you need it to be. So we can go close to corners near combustible walls, just like this. No problem at all. This is completely within the specification. We'll turn her up a little bit. But isn't that beautiful? Right. Right, so I've actually just looked at the camera on my phone to get a timing. And from when I started this video, before I opened V's front door, was 20 minutes ago. So it's 20 minutes since I lit that fire. And it's burning beautifully. That's still kindling in there. That's still my kindling fire. There you go, see? With the small logs on top. Let's turn it to about a medium burn. It will go substantially lower, but we'll deal with that in a minute. And what we're gonna do is go back outside and have a look at that flame.
So that flow is heating up very well and there's almost nothing coming out the top of it. There's a little bit, but not a lot. Now that flue will not yet be at temperature. It's still really cold. It just takes a while for a twin model to heat up. But do you see much out there? No. See, no. there's hardly anything to see there at all. And that is because we've got it going up to temperature inside quite quickly. Push all that cold air out and your chimney pulls much better. It makes it dead easy when you use the light, the right light techniques. So just to let you see, that's our flue. That's our fire. There we go. See, isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. It's this reason why the Mini 4 is one of, well, I'm not saying one of our most popular, it is our most popular stove. It runs on a five inch flue system. It fits tight into corners. It gets up to temperature nice and quick. We can fit it really compact in on a clipped corner hearth to maximize floor space. And it just runs beautifully. It just doesn't give me any trouble. And I love this little fire. Why am I going to put it in my own assistant's house if it isn't something that we'd want to run? There's not enough lot more I can say. It's just it's just a, such a good all round performing little stove. You can't help but love it. Right, so I'd say it's properly up to heat now and it's on a medium air. And that is still my original kindling fire with my little log on top. That's all that's in there. So if I turn it right up, you can see the increase in draw and the air injectors are kicking all the air into the black. And when I turn it right down, it takes about 10 seconds to burn off all the air in the firebox. And you can see that she's slowing right down really nicely. There we are. Well, there you are. This Viking Mini 4 is burning just beautifully. And it's up to temperature in 25 minutes from cold. And the flue is just nice already as well. And it's not cold out there today. It's, as I say, it's about 20 degrees, so I'm not gonna keep this fire burning in her poor little house. I'm gonna go back to the office and um, show you what this looks like when it's not installed. Do a close it up view. Viking Mini 2 and Mini 4 stoves from Guam. Now, these stoves are manufactured in Denmark and they come in several different options. Typically, Guam manufacture stoves to order, um, but these are very popular units for us and some of our best sellers, so I keep all of these options that you'll see today in hand and in stock, and plus maybe some other ones that you don't. So I'm going to show you all about them and then I'm going to take you to my colleague's home so you can see one burning for real and that stove has already been installed for a year. She's been kind enough to let me go and video it. So why do I like them so much? Well, these are not only a really pretty and compact little stove but they're incredibly good value for money and have a very low clearance to combustible distance. They can fit just... Um, seven and a half centimeters, three inches, 
at the back for a bit of combustible walls and as tight as five centimeters this much not very far at all from the back corners from combustible walls when you put them against a 45 degree corner and that is on twin wall insulated pipe where you take twin wall insulated pipe hard off the top of the appliance their top and rear flow exit and they do have a built-in direct air option so you only need to buy the hose for the wall you don't have to buy a lot of manifold um, attachment so let's take a look so for the purposes of showing you options i have pulled out both a black one on the right and a grey one on the left black really has always been the most popular we do so many of these it's our best selling model in the whole shop and i currently have about 30 of them in stock if that doesn't tell you do we like them a lot i don't know what does but um gray is another option that you can have and i've just had half a dozen of these delivered in this beautiful color it's a really soft color and gray goes very well with silver pipe um silver pipe compared to black powder coated is probably about 20 percent less money and sometimes silver can work well when you've got a lot of light reflection off windows and things it can work really well so the door handles on whams and vikings in general are absolutely beautiful they're just stunning to operate once you've felt how these open and shut to be honest, you'll want nothing else. They're the most nicest to handle stove in terms of opening and shutting door closure that I've ever found today. They feel like a high-end Merc car. Now, on almost all the WAMs, like the bigger models like this, the door handles don't get hot. But from what I've seen or noticed, because we run one of these as a lit display on this larger model, which is just behind me. The door handle is actually offset a bit to the door and it is air cooled. There's a little hole in behind and it's hollow up the bottom to let the air out. And these ones don't get hot. These handles never get any heat in them and never get hot. The Mini 4, however, the handles do get hot. They still have the same air hole. They still have the hollow handle. And the only thing that I can put this down to is the actual angle because it's straight on forwards or nearly straight on forwards of the door as opposed to being offset like that, if you see what I mean. So I've actually ordered a couple extra handles to see if I can have them bent at the engineering shop and see if there's any way of stopping the handles getting hot. Because honestly, other than a hot handle, this is a remarkable little stove and there's nothing about it not to love. They just run great, feel great, not a problem. Just noticed I've not quite put that baffle in. The parts are dead easy to get in and out. See, there's the baffle out. And then there's another bit in there that you can take out and you clean up the chimney and it's not a problem. Now, that there is, I don't know if this is the right word or not, but that's a hermetic spring. So basically that controls the bottom air for you. It's almost semi-automatic. And put this baffle back in, shows you how easy, given I've only got one hand, it is to get the panels in and out. There we go, that's the baffle back in. You couldn't get easier or more simple part removal. It really is dead simple. And these do have like the best ash pan I have ever seen. So they are a wood burner nice deep firebox area it's plenty big enough let's find a tape measure and this time i've got a new tape measure that i can actually read because i got really annoyed in my last video because i'm left-handed so as you can see you would easily get a 12 inch log in there so 10 inch ones are no problem whatsoever loads of depth as in front to back and plenty of depth in there so let's just pop a couple of 10 inch logs in there and you'll see there's plenty of size in that firebox and a fabulous looking great big glass door now i like this version with the open 
log store at the bottom because there's loads of depth to get your logs in underneath as so. Now, in the one that Violetta's got in her house, she actually has a bottom log door. But the version with the bottom log door, I'm not so keen on because it's blanked off half the way down and you lose a lot of that firebox space. I think it's mainly to close off any potential sight of our direct air. Now, these stoves have a direct air spigot built into them as standard. And the Mini 2 is no different to the Mini 4, except it doesn't have the lug box on the bottom. So the Mini 2 with short legs is near enough 650 mil high. And the Mini 4 is higher at just under 900 mil high. So about 10 inches different. Except the Mini 2 on the legs has to go on a constructional hearth. In other words, it can't go on a 12 mil hearth freestanding. It can if you put longer legs on it, but if not, you need a constructional hearth. Whereas these will easy fit on 12 mil thick glass or 20 mil granite or whatever you fancy. Now, looking at the back and the top, they can come with a five in, they come with a five inch flu collar, or you can change it to a six. I'm gonna do this with one hand. Hey, can I borrow you a second, Pat? Hmm, maybe she didn't hear me. Right, okay, so I can do this with one hand then. Two and the phone and take the top off. And what you will see is the panels that you get on a convection stove like this are done for lots of airflow and to act like a diffuser. So therefore, minimal heat to the walls, maximum heat out the front to the room, and the ability to go close to combustibles. That's also why we've got these vent holes in the top, to get the heat from that casing out quicker into your room. Um, it's not easy to take bits on and off with one hand. I think that's back on, right? Where's my collar? There we go. That's just a trim info. So on the back of the stove, we've got this disc that we can pop out for either five inch or six inch. And then you change the blank plate to the top and the flue collar to the back if required. Now on this one underneath, you can see where the direct air attaches. And that just takes a hundred millimeter ducting pipe that can go straight from the back of the stove. And that, that manifold piece is already incorporated into the back of both the Mini 2 and the Mini 4. Although on the Mini 4, it's blanked off until you pop off that panel plate. And otherwise the stove is literally just the same. So the air systems in these, what did I do with my control box? Here we go. Let me find a blue torch. I've had to move everything out of the way to make space to pull everything out in the shop. So let's just see. So that dial that's inside the stove is represented here, okay? And you'll see the control lever that makes that work. This is for the bottom, for the primary air that comes underneath. And this part of the air supply to the stove, the stove controls itself. Now, it's not completely automatic, but what it means is, if your fire is too cold, let's do this back to front. If your fire is too cold because your fuel is burning out or you just lit it, it is going to move that lever, which is happening quite slowly. And that closes, there we go, and opens this air vent. So when it gets too hot, it shuts its bottom air back off. And as your fuel is dying back out, that spring relaxes again and reopens that vent to give it more air to burn off more carbon for the cleaner burn. So technically, this stove is pretty much semi-automatic. 
you therefore only have one air control and that one air control is controlling just your top air because it's doing the bottom for you. So that one air control, you can see down here at the bottom. Dead simple. And it operates with the door shut, but you just put your hand down underneath. Now, the irony is that with every stove model I know of, it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. It's like turning a tap on and off. So you turn it off to the left and you turn it on to the right. And usually that's how stoves work. So basically it's shut on the left and open on the right. With these, it's not quite so obvious. It turns out it's back to front. It's just how they do it. And I hadn't initially known when I did the test burn on this, so I had to do it twice. But it does when you look at it closely. But you really do have to get down low to see. Because here's your air vent here. And when you look at that air vent way down low closely, there is a little sign on it that shows wider on the left and smaller on the right. So this one is open when it's to the left and you shut to the right. So if you're used to stoves and you think they work the way they normally do, this one might be slightly confusing. Not I've not any other ones that do that so far. All the other ones that I've got in the shop, right from and including my big beastie here, the 4640C, all go left to right. Low to high, on, off. But the Y King model is just backwards. So just keep an eye on that one in case you think it's not working when it actually is and it's you that's out. Right, one last little bit just to finish off. And this is across all Swam Stove models. The doors. Something can go wrong and it's not major. It's dead easy to fix. So just in case it ever happens to you, it's worth knowing this. See when you open the door like that, there is your latch down here. All right? This latch. Door handle. Shut the door. Open the door. No problem. But if this latch flips back because you've pressed it or hit it wrong with your hand or bumped it with your leg, it's going to do that. And then your door won't shut. And it really is nothing major for people panic about this. There's nothing to panic about. Just get a kitchen knife, just an ordinary table knife or a screwdriver and just pop it in behind the latch and pop the latch back out. And that's it. As simple as that. And then my door works again. I hope that's useful and you've enjoyed yet another video from us here at Natural Heating. Um, do follow our Facebook page and our YouTube and come and see us in the shop. We've got lots of different stoves on display. Happy hiding! <laughs> so we've got lots of different stoves on display. We take you a walk around in here another day. There's lots and lots to say. I've got about 80 odd different models in the showroom and more that won't even fit in here. And lots of stock all ready to go. Um, so whether you need a fitter or you just want to buy a fire and kind of play with them, there's lots to choose from and everybody's always welcome. We've always got plenty of coffee and tea on tap and in summertime maybe gold drinks. Anyway, I better go and clear all this mess up because I've got stuff out everywhere, put all these stoves back away in the warehouse, back on the shelf and um, I guess I'll see you another day. Thank you for watching.